Hush Manzada is going to stop by. It's NFL Combine Week. And, uh, it's, you know, it's it's guys working out in their shorts, but this can change draft statuses. And, and it can really change uh, the, the career arc for a lot of these young people. And, and I want to talk about young people. Two things are happening in American sports, and both are cool. One, athletes are lasting longer. Tom Brady's going to be 43. Uh, LeBron James will be the best player, arguably, in the playoffs. It's nutrition. It's training, uh, pliability. Players are lasting longer than they ever have, and I think it's awesome. The stars are around a lot longer. Uh, 35 used to be kind of toward the end. Now, I think 40. That, that's 40 is now the number you look at. The second thing that's happening, and this is amazing, players are better younger. Uh, Jason Tatum yesterday, right in front of our eyes, he's 21 years old. And I want you to think to yourself, at 21, were you mature enough to be the best player, the best young player on the Eastern Seaboard? Because Jason Tatum, folks, is 21 years old, and he is now the Boston Celtics best player, and he is a star. He put on a clinic yesterday. Uh, outside, inside, he puts the ball on the deck. He can handle it. Um, he, it's a remarkable thing we're seeing how good Zion is at 19 years old, how good Jason Tatum is. Uh, a lot of it's coaching kids get better earlier. Uh, I think Boston's one of four teams in the NBA, uh, that can win the championship, Milwaukee Lakers, Clippers are the other. Then there's a handful of Denver and Utah's and Phillies that are interesting, but Boston to me checks all the boxes. If you're a gambling person, they have the most unique odds as an underdog. They they check the coach box, excellent. Uh, they they check the multiple K players capable of scoring 20 box, check. They now check that we've got a star we can go to with two minutes left box, check. They check the playoff experience box. I thought yesterday was a great loss in the NBA. I don't believe all wins... Um, don't have fault, and I don't think all losses are bad. I thought yesterday was as good a loss as the Celtics could have. A minute 17 to go in the Staples Center uh, in a playoff atmosphere, and Boston led without Kemba Walker in Los Angeles, and both LeBron and AD were very, very strong. So I think Boston checks all the bosses, uh, boxes. That was a very good loss for them. And I think it's just one of the things we're now seeing in sports. I really like it. You know, I've always been into the NFL draft and the NFL combine. And I've had people in the media ask me for years, you know, what is it about, you know, like combines and joy kind of laughs? What is it about drafts? And I said, if I wasn't a sportscaster, I would be a scout. And I, I'm fascinated to find, I guess it's like if you uh, were into music and you spotted the great band at, you know, the Troubadour in Los Angeles before anybody knew about the great band and you're there one night with your buddy. It's a Thursday night at the Troubadour in Los Angeles and this band comes up and it's you too. Uh, you know, and they're all like 20 years old. That's how I feel about sports. But what you're watching with Jason Tatum is this is how a superstar is crafted. He comes in, he's talented, takes a step back, doesn't get along with Kyrie. Kyrie leaves. And here he goes. He has popped in the last 25 games. In fact, let me look at the number here. In his last three, and this is against L.A. teams, 36 points, shooting 48% from three. Uh, and I think yesterday Boston proved they are absolutely capable of winning the NBA championship. Uh, let me shift to this. We were at the fight Saturday night in Vegas. Um, I watch a lot of politics, but I don't talk a lot about it. But I've always had this theory. I've seen this. The pendulum swing back and forth. I remember when the Democrats felt like, oh, the party's flailing. And then they found this guy named Obama. And for eight years, he was president. And the conservatives are like, we, we can't find a guy. We, we can't find. And then they, they eventually find somebody who nobody expected to run for president. And then, then you get a Donald Trump thing after Bush. And it's like, oh, now the Democrats are like, we, we can't find a guy. We, we, we. You're as good as a party as your leading candidate. If you get the right person in office, man or woman, and they can galvanize people and they're good debaters, that's a skill, ask Mike Bloomberg, that's a skill to be able to debate and be verbal and talk. Your political party's fine as long as you have the right person leading it. They, they cinch it all together. It's the same in boxing. Boxing's dead. Boxing's a mess. UFC's taking over. Not Saturday, because the heavyweight division is back. Boxing is as good 
as the heavyweight division. They don't make 30 for 30s on the bantamweight division. My entire life, boxing's been as popular as the heavyweights have been captivating. There was Ali. It was, I remember watching cartoon shows as a kid, and it was interrupted for an update on Ali beating Foreman and Zaire. It was J.P. Patches in Seattle. They stopped the show. The clown said, this just in, Ali beat Foreman and Zaire. I'm seven. I didn't bet it. But it was a big deal. And then you had the Larry Holmes years. It was boring. The boxing is dead. Then the Mike Tyson years. It's back. The Lennox Lewis years. Then you had the Klitschko years. Not, not very captivating. Saturday night, the heavyweight division's back. Like a political party, you're as good as the face of it. And Fury is 6'9". He sings after fights. He's talked about his depression and suicidal thoughts. He's an open book. He's verbal. He's 6'9". He's 270. He is like nothing I think I've ever seen on and off out of the ring. Uh, I thought it was a wonderful night for the sport. Uh, boxing's never been dead. UFC won't be dead. UFC was better when Conor McGregor was leading it. It's not that it's it's not that UFC's in trouble now, but they're looking for the next Conor. They're looking for the next Conor. And political parties are looking for their next Reagan or their next Obama uh, their, or their next Clinton. That's the way it works. Fury after the fight. He is our new champ. I think he's great for the sport. He is uh, an open book, completely unique. And I, I thought he capped off a great week of interviews and a great night of fighting. We didn't mind revealing the game plan. Now, we had nothing to hide. I said what I was going to do, run across the ring to him, put him on the back foot, and unload big shots on him. And I know at six foot nine and 270 pounds, if I hit anybody, I'll knock him back out. Everybody knows I'm a master slick boxer, and I can jab and move around the ring for 12 rounds. Um, but that didn't work last time. I got a draw. Like I said, a draw is a failure to me, because all I do is win, win, win. And this time, I wanted the knockout, and I think the only way I could guarantee that I was going to get a win was the knockout. Yeah, I was lucky enough to have a really good seat. And um, when the fight started, um, Fury was in the far corner from me, and Deontay Wilder was in the corner back to me, nearest to me. And the bell rang, and Fury walked right toward me and right toward Wilder. And he sort of leaned into what he is, which is a big, strong, 270-pound man. He gained 16 pounds for it. We talked about this earlier. Sometimes you just got to lean into who you are. In society now, everybody's trying to smush all of us homogenized right to the middle. And Fury's like, nah, I'm 270 and 6'9". I'm not dancing. I'm going to put weight back on. I'm going to fire my trainer. And I'm going to go out and try to beat up the littler guy. And Lamar Jackson... He can throw from the pocket, but what makes him special is his legs, and everybody's trying to tell Zion Williamson, you know, you need to lose weight. You know what? How about you try stopping him first before you lecture him on his diet? Lean in to who you are. Lean in. Tyson Fury did and uh, capped off a great night of boxing. He is a big man. I Bo will say, though, while he put on weights, he looked like he was in better shape than the first fight. He's, you could tell, like, he's talked on the show about getting a different nutritionist, having a live-in nutritionist, and eating differently. His and movement was great. and fruit. He looked bigger, but in better shape. Yeah. His entrance was a little lengthy for my taste. I think he, you needed the dramatics. I like both the entrances. I need that. I need that. I knew mask. you did. As they were driving me insane, I'm thinking, <laughs> Joy loves this. It was really, it was. It's part of the scene. It's part it of the, the, the dramatics and the, the tension. It was, it was long, but it was, it was also very unique. T.J. Hushman's auto is coming up next. The NFL Combine starts today. He'll take us back to his, what matters and what doesn't. The 30-year Treasury yield plunged to a record low on Friday as investors are crowding into bonds. Now, I mention this because the Treasury yield is closely linked to your mortgage rates, my mortgage rate. When one goes down, so does the other, meaning these next few weeks are going to bring competitively low interest rates, some of the lowest we've seen in a long time. Those of you who bought a home last year, two years ago, may want to refinance. If you're above 4%, get on it. Do something about it with American Financing. Call tonight. Call now. 
because they're open and they're ready to help you save hundreds of month simply by lowering your rate you can save six seven eight hundred dollars with small marginal moves getting a better rate you may even be able to postpone two mortgage payments yeah only if you call american financing 866-615-9200 866-615-9200 or go online at americanfinancing.net Thank you.